For now, for our uh, what's really locally out there, we're going to turn to our 4 A chair, Mitch Forday, who will uh, walk through some of the things that people have found uh, recently out in our local woods. Mitch. Hey, everybody. How you doing? All right. So here's uh, the uh, Ma monthly ID table. Uh, I'll send out another reminder email and uh, shortly just to so that you can guys can send me some mushroom pictures and see what we can get on the next one. Um, I wasn't able to use everybody's, so uh, we had quite a few submissions. So sorry if I didn't use yours, I appreciate it. Um, anyway, let's move right along. All right, so you guys probably saw some of these. They were fairly common this year. Um, uh, a lot of them around right now. It's getting a little bit late into the season, so you'd be lucky to find them. Uh, uh, they only come up in the fall. Uh, you can see this one, as they get a little older, the pores start getting a little bit bigger. This one might be a little dried out. Anyway, this is a uh, Griffola frondosa, hen of the woods. Uh, I saw one maybe two weeks ago and it was it looked okay from far away and when I got up close it had the gnats flying all around it and you know it was starting to get soft and mushy uh, so at this point they're probably done for the year all right so this is an interesting whitish mushroom um, hopefully you guys know you should probably be wary when you see a mushroom that is all white, uh, especially if it's got this ring. Uh, you'll see, uh, I hope Tom, this was submitted by Tom McCoy. Hopefully he didn't forget his watch out there. Um, and when we flip it over, we see, wow, this looks kind of like an agaricus, uh, like the button mushrooms that you find at the grocery store. Um, it's got this membranous, ring on the stipe uh, but if you notice the gills they are not starting to change color so this mushroom actually has white spores you notice it also doesn't have a uh, the remnants of a universal veil here that would indicate something in the amanita something like amanita bisporigia varosa um, one of those deadly poisonous mushrooms. So that's why the white mushrooms, you gotta be careful. Agaricus, by th at this point, you would probably at least be starting to see some sort of pink coloration going on to that chocolate brown. Um, this is a Leuco agaricus leucophytes. Uh, it was Leuco agaricus nosinus when I learned it. Um, but anyway, this is something that you wouldn't would want to avoid um, just because it looks so much like an amanita, one of the deadly toxins, deadly destroying angels. So I wouldn't recommend it. They do say this one is possibly edible, but I think it might have upset some people's stomach, plus the dangers of misidentification. <clears throat> All right, so a lot of you guys probably have seen this one as well. Um, orange mushroom growing in shelves, growing on some wood. Okay, looks like chicken of the woods. Well, that's actually what this is. But when, uh, who, let's see, when Lena, so this was Lena Von Rosing found this one in uh, Maydale Park, Silver Spring. And when she turned it over, what is going on here? This is unusual. Um, Latiparus sulfurius is typically has either has a, a yellow pore, pore surface and Cincinnatus has kind of a tannish whitish pore surface. So what's going on? Why is this orange on the bottom? Um, I couldn't zoom in further to really see but there is a hypomyces that grows on polypores and I suspect that might be what this is although when I've seen that hypomyces it's just been a small little portion on something like a, a little white cheese polypore or something. Um, so I, 
this is more of a guess. Maybe there's another hypothesis that likes chicken of the woods or something along those lines. I mean, it kind of looks like you would see a lobster mushroom turning, you know, like Russula brevipes into this like reddish orange looking thing with this kind of surface that looks similar to this. Um, if we were able to look closer, we might be able to see little um, you know, parathesia the, where they, the spores are produced, but, but it was all pixelated, so I couldn't tell. But anyway, I, I'm suspecting this is some sort of hy uh, hypomyces, possibly hypomyces or orantius. Um, I may be wrong though, um, but it's quite interesting. And it, you can almost see there's, there's like a bloom on the top of this mushroom. I'm wondering if that is actually the mycelium of a hypomyces kind of growing into the mushroom and then almost emerging on the other side. I mean, you could, anyway, just a theory. Another mushroom that you guys have probably been seeing around, uh, these guys fruited uh, recently. So this, I think Fred Hicks sent me this picture a week, week and a half ago. He found these in Lacey Woods Park. Um, I, I, we had these on a different uh, table ID, maybe a month or maybe even two months ago. Um, you may recognize them. They're growing in these cespitos, meaning like um, all arising from one central location, clusters. They have these fi fibrils on the cap. You'll notice there's no ring on here. Um, these are actually Armillaria tibescens. Uh, I had a, a, a fruiting in my neighborhood as well. So I, we had two and these are pretty commonly will have multiple fruits in a good year with a lot of rain. Um, and when they come up, they can come up in abundance. You know, like I, I there's one yard where it's probably an old stump and it, they're just growing from the roots and you just see little clusters of them all over the place. Anyway, this is the second fruiting of those this year. All right, this one, this is one I threw in that I found. Found this over at Patuxent Research Center. It looks kind of like a little oyster from far away in that little washed out picture I showed, but when you get a little closer, it's got all these weird spiny features on it. Um, they're actually like gelatinous spines growing on the surface there. It's a little browner in the picture. It was a little more gray. Um, my, my color and my photos didn't turn out so hot. Um, it's a little bit rare. Um, I, the last time I found this mushroom was in Louisiana at the Nama foray. Um, this is Hohenbulia mass Mastricata. Um, um, I just thought it was interesting. It's another one that looks kind of like an oyster shape, you know, but it's, it's, once you get up close, it's got these weird little features and you're like, oh geez, what is that? Um, and it's different than our sinus, which kind of has that dark base where it's growing. And anyway, uh, white spore print, you can see lots of lamellae there, the little bitty gills. All right, uh, I've got quite a few reports of these guys. Um, unfortunately, April didn't get a shot of the top of this one, but you can see it has these lovely lilac colors. Um, in a good year, these can come up in abundance. They like um, old leaf litter, just basically forest junk, you know, old wood, just like bark falling off a tree or something along those lines. Um, they have lilac tones. Um, if you were to take a spore print, it would kind of be a pinkish color. You can see in these larger specimens. So here's, I believe, the one she's got in her hand there on the left. And it's kind of a darker purple. And as it gets older, it spreads out, starts turning this tan color. Same thing would happen on the cap. In fact, the cap could go completely tan. Um, these are Clytosabe nuda, Lepista nuda, bluets. Um, these are quite tasty. They have, keep a good texture when you cook them, uh, but you have to be careful 
And if you're not, if you're new to collecting mushrooms, you need to be aware that these can look very much like Cortinarius. Uh, Cortinarius are gonna have a rusty spore print. They have a, 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 what they call a Cortina, and that is basically like a cobwebby veil as the mushroom cap expands. Um, a lot of times it'll leave remnants on the stipe. And when the spores start being produced, you'll actually kind of see like a little rusty brown uh, ring around the, the stipe. And that can be a clear indicator. The, the gills will eventually start going rusty, but when, if it's just opening, sometimes it might be hard to tell. And they can, they, they can really look very similar to each other. So be sure, because some of the cortinarius have orelanines, which are really can mess up your kidneys. Um, it's a weird thing because it like takes a couple of weeks and you're like, oh, geez, what's wrong? And uh, anyway, you just have to be careful. All right, so this one's submitted by Isabella Farr. She found him in Seneca Regional Park. You're like, oh God, what is this? Tiny little white funky little balls on a tree. Great, okay. Um, I, I like these. <laughs> I thought it was kind of cool. I found these on a, a a beech tree years ago. It took me years to figure out what it was. Um, zooming in a little close, you can see they're pretty small. That's her hand. Uh, so they are fairly small. Um, they're kind of cool looking. And apparently if you know about these and you think about it, you can kind of give them a whiff and they smell a bit like fenugreek. I didn't know this at the time, so I can't speak from experience. Um, but these are the fenugreek stalk ball. They grow on other hardwoods, um, but uh, they're called Fleogena phagenia because I guess the first time they were found, it was on a beech tree. Anyway, I thought those were kind of cool. All right, so you might have seen some of these around. This was submitted by Jennifer Hoyer. Um, bunches of gray mushrooms in little troops like this. I, I encountered something like this quite a few times already, um, wandering actually near my house. Um, uh, this year, uh, we happen to be finding lots of these gray things. Sometimes they're a little more white. So sometimes they have yellow colors, but this is actually a tricholoma. Now there are lots and lots of tricholomas and you might know like, a lot of the white spored mushrooms were just kind of, if they had white spores, they kind of threw them in tricholoma. And they still, you know, they're still working some of these out, I think. There's, there's a lot of gray coloration to these. So I tried to put something on there. I think it is. It looks like it's growing in oak woods, which might help to get you to your species because there are some that have specific associations with conifers and specific associations with oaks. Of course, then you've got your, you know, like Tricholoma portentosum, apparently it can be found maybe with each. So anyway, I, I ended up putting Tricholoma pullum on this one. Um, I thought that um, just the coloration of the gills was a little gray. And so something like portentosum has more of a white coloration. Uh, you know, anyway, going IDs from um, pictures is, can be hard to begin with. So a lot of these might be kind of like hoping I'm getting close. Um, anyway, that's what that is. And you may have seen some of these gray tricholomas growing in your area because they've been pretty abundant this year. This one submitted by Tom McCoy. Nice picture there, Tom. You're getting some good photographs in. Um, this is what we would call an LBM, little brown mushroom. Um, kind of hard to tell. You can see the leaves here. It is fairly small. It's got this glabrous, meaning kind of like smooth cap. It looks like it's a little slimy. Um, uh, I'm guessing it was pretty moist that day. Uh, if it was to start drying out, we would probably start seeing a different coloration along the edge. That would be hygrophonous. Uh, so as it dries, the mushroom cap dries out, it can kind of change to a different color. Um, it has some ring zones when you turn it over. Um, so that's here and here. I, I think it might be more of the, the lighting that's kind of giving it these different colors. But a lot of times 
you'll see the stipe is a very similar color to the cap. Sometimes you see a lighter colored stipe to these. Um, this is a good one to recognize um, because this is Gallerina marginata, the deadly Gallerina. So this has the same toxins as uh, the deadly Amanitas. They're amatoxins and they get in you and kind of gather up in your liver, liver and stop protein synthesis. It's not a good thing. Um, good one to know. Um, good, good reason to stay away if you decide that you're going to eat some little brown mushrooms because if you get this one, it can mess you up. All right, so this one's submitted by Lisa Ham. This one's a little more beefy, kind of bigger. Um, when we get a little closer, you'll see that this smaller guy kind of has this bluing reaction on it. Um, orange colorations, kind of scaly looking cap. They're not really, you know, they're just kind of part of the ornamentations on the, the, uh, the cap there. Um, this is in the Cortinarius family, so it's going to have uh, rusty uh, spores. Uh, sometimes if it's getting older, you might see them falling on the, the ring you see here. Um, if you do find these, give them a whiff. A lot of them smell really nice. Um, I did a little research into this one. Um, I'm not sure that we know what all these are. But one thing I can tell you, it's a Gymnopolis. I'm going to put Gymnopolis junonius on it. Um, that, um, that's the new name, that's the American name for the big laughing gym. Um, some of them do contain psilocybin and this bluing reaction would be a good indicator that it, it does have, uh, you know, it's alkaloids in it. Um, there are quite a few different other species that do not. And uh, I was trying to find a name because if you go to Wikipedia, they said that Junonius doesn't, but I don't think that that's the case. I, think, I don't think that they quite know, I don't think they've spittle, figured things out yet. So anyway, um, fun mushroom to find. Um, like I said, give it a little whiff. They usually smell pretty good. Apparently there, uh, if you find luteus, which is usually a little bit smaller, and you smell the, the gills, it can almost have like an anise aroma. Um, this one kind of almost has a floral smell to it. Um, so this is submitted by Priscilla Yoon. She found this at Assateague Island. Um, this one was pretty cool to me. I, you don't very often find mushrooms growing um, in sand dunes, you can see these uh, the pine needles nearby. Um, so there's there's conifers. Um, it looks like when she snapped it, it snapped almost like chalk. Um, I had to look this one up. There's a few that can be found in sand dunes. I'm thinking this might be Russula ventricosipes, which is actually one of the Russulas that are in the like Lorisaraceae, like some of those ones that smell almondy. Um, but she didn't give it a whiff. It also looks like it has like some sort of fungus growing on the on the gills there. That may be what this is because it does look like it is a Russula, so it's possible. Um, and the last one here, this was submitted by Isabella Farr. We had this one last month. And I said, I didn't know what the name was. Well, um, I don't know if it was looked up on iNaturalist or, or what, but this is apparently Trematopsis cervina. Um, you can see it's got this almost maze-like um, thing happening with the, with the pores. Um, they're pretty deep pores. Uh, it's got this zonate cap, fairly smooth, not very hairy. Um, but anyway, if you find some of those, um, that's what they are. It, it was also in Trimedi, but they put it in Trimatopsis. All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, appreciate you uh, sending your mushrooms in, and I'll get the notification out shortly. I didn't mention, but William already mentioned, we're going to set up so that the Chitrid, Chitrid, however you pronounce that, um, foray shortly. So you'll be hearing from me at some point.